Welcome back to In Ohio Country today, and we're here at the Molly Karen Ag Center at the opening ceremonies of the Ohio Farm Science Review. And with me is Jane Timken, a candidate for uh, the Ohio Senate seat that is going to be coming up uh, in, in the election next year. Um, and Jane, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really glad to be here. It's really important to get out and support our agricultural community and the Ohio State University. Um, they do such a wonderful job, and I'm really excited to be here. Well, Jane, before we get really talking a little bit about you know your 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 thoughts and and your policies, mm -hmm. give us a little bit of background on yourself because I think it's important that people in agriculture and the farmers of Ohio understand wh where you come from. Right? Sure. Well, I originally grew up in Cincinnati, but I've lived in Stark County for the last 27 years, and I live on about a 700-acre farm in Stark County. Um, we grow corn and soybean, and it's a beautiful country. And I'm, you know, I'm always going to stand up for a Ohio farmers. We, they're our number one industry in this state, and I plan on being their champion in the United States Senate. Well, you know, we're talking about being a farmer's champion in the United States Senate. You know, alternative energy, renewable energies, all those kind of things are important. How do you view ethanol particularly? Because, you know, we've that's been around, and it seems to be a very important part of, of the agriculture industry in Ohio. Sure. Well, I, I'm a all of the above energy is my mo motto. Um, we need to make sure that we have the resources to provide for our ag community, our manufacturing community, and for the rest of Ohio. Um, you know, I think it's important to have ethanol as a resource. And it's a, important for farmers. It's another means for them to be productive and make money and, and continue farming. So it's a good, It's to me, it's a win-win. Well, you know, you mentioned agriculture being the number one industry in Ohio, and when we talk about that, it's not necessarily that it's the number one industry because of the actual row crop production. I mean, there's a lot more to it and the value-added products that come from the state of Ohio. Right. Well, because we have such a huge agricultural base in Ohio, we have so many ancillary partners that have been producers, whether it's seed producers or others in the state of Ohio, that it's really important that we get out and support our farming communities. Uh, they, they, they feed us, they you know, shelter us sometimes, and they provide so much in the production for Ohio. And it's really important that we stand up for them and uh, make sure that someone's fighting for them. Well, you know, we talk about energy, you know, and so a hot topic here in Ohio has been the wind and the solar, right? Uh, you know, it's very, it's very polarizing. And so, you know, what are you, what do you, what's your view on on the the wind and the and the solar energy? So, sure, as I said, I'm all of the above energy. But look, we also have some real issues, um, especially when you talk about the Biden administration and what they want to do. Um, they, I don't know if you've heard about their 30 for 30 plan, which is they want to have the federal government take over 30 percent of this country's land and water. Um, I'm very concerned about. Uh, eminent domain, taking over people's property to put solar and wind farms in, uh, and that is not right, and it is, it, I will stand up and push back against it. Look, if people want to have wind and solar on their farms, that's their right, that's their property, um, but I think that the local community and the farm owners need to have a voice in all of that before we just start mandating things like that. You know, so, so we, you know, another topic, and, and it's all over the news right now, uh, because Ohio has a lot of dairy industry and and you know vegetables and those kind of things is immigration and you know how do you see that going and what what is your position on, on that? Sure, look, uh, I'm the granddaughter of immigrants. I'm the daughter of an immigrant, but we have to have legal immigration. You see what's happening at the southern border right now. We have on track to have 1.2 million illegal immigrants crossing the border. But I, you know, I know farmers need to have people who can work their fields. I think we can do a lot to reform our immigration, but we have to secure the border first. We have to make sure that people come in this country legally, um, and there's ways that we can do it so that it helps our farmers and helps people uh, obtain their jobs and eventually legal citizenship if that's what they choose. But we have to secure our, our border first. And right now what's happening is all in the hands of Joe Biden and his own border crisis that he created. Um, we, 
what's happening there. We have drugs and human trafficking all coming across our southern border. It's affecting our communities right here in Ohio. We had record overdoses last year, and it's all coming from the southern border, and it needs to stop. I applauded you know, President Trump when he wanted to build the wall, and I'm, I'm for building the wall. Well, Jane, you know, we, we talked about, you know, the, the, how agriculture is important to Ohio, energy, uh, immigration, trade. Give us a little bit, you know, talk, give us a, your position, your thoughts on trade and where we're at with that. Well, look, um, President Trump was right when he renegotiated and we installed the USMCA, allowed our farmers to sell our products into Canada and Mexico, and he stood up to the Chinese and make sure that they weren't dumping their agricultural products here in the United States and that they were buying some of our goods and products, um, our beef and, and, and our soybeans. So I think it's really important. I'm the America First candidate. I'm going to be in the trenches fighting for America First, Ohio First. And that's the in terms of trade, that's the priority. Um, and you know, there's other regulations that the Biden administration's putting out there that before Trump came into office, they were pushing waters of the United States. Look, I live on a farm. I know what it's like when it rains like today, and we have uh, you know a, a, a lower part of the farm. It floods a little bit. There's no reason that the Army Corps of Engineers should be able to control that part of my farm. It's ridiculous. It's an undue burden on farmers. I, it's another example of the federal government does not understand farming. They make up these rules and they've never actually walked a field. You know, so we've hit, hit all those topics and you just brought up a very interesting point. Environmental. So, so you know, farmers, I believe, are, you know, very good. I know they're very good environmental stewards, right, of, of the land and particularly Ohio farmers. Give us your your thought and on you know on, on how we're gonna you know clean up Lake Erie and take care of the the the, 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 the problem we have in the Gulf of Mexico, right? Right. Well, I, you know, farmers, you're right. Um, they want clean water, clean air, clean soil. That's their lifeblood. That's how they produce. Um, I think. We have. I think there's good solutions that we can come together with, uh, with our science, with our farmers, um, with our business community to come up with innovative solutions. When we talk about the algae bloom on Lake Erie, we talk about some of the other issues we have. We have problems with runoff on my farm. I'm very aware of it. Um, there's. I think there's ways to have innovative solutions without mandating regulations again that don't make sense coming out of Washington D.C. There's a real opportunity to bring farmers to the table and with our new technology to, I think, create a situation where we uh, you know, at attack some of this algae bloom and, and other environmental issues that we have. To me, the mandates and regulatory environment are not always the solution and they aren't common sense and they're not talking to the farmers first and that's what I would do. You know, so so something that, that we are really exploring on our farm operation, uh, because we've been no-till cover crops and all those kind of things, uh, you know, exclusively 100% for quite some time, is carbon credits. Yeah. So, so how do you see that fitting in um, without a federal mandate? Yeah, it's, it's really difficult. Um, you know, I think that there's a lot of opportunity with carbon credits. I think it's an, it's it's always to me it's the cost benefit analysis of all of it. Does it make sense? Is it something that we should be pushing as a federal policy or not? Um, I think the, I would always look at it as a lens as a benefit to Ohio and Ohio farmers. And, and if it's not, not sure we should do it. Well, Jane, I really appreciate your time today, and thanks for being with us. Thanks, Alan. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be back with more in Ohio Country Today right after this. Alan Davis, business owner, active farmer. No one knows farmers' needs better than Alan. Give him a call today at 419-738-7447 and talk about total farm protection and more. Alan Davis Insurance Agency is your solutions provider for auto, home, life, business, recreational, total farm protection and more. Call 419-738-7447. That's 419-738-7447.